You see the commercials all the time, and there's no shortage of Viagra jokes, but for millions of men, it is no joke. Relationship expert Dr. Julie Rosenzweig is here to talk about erectile dysfunction. Yes. This is, at least in my opinion, has got to be the most embarrassing problem for men. It's a huge problem for men and for many men. Um, and it's hard to get kind of a, a, a real handle on how many men it involves. The estimates are anywhere from 15 to 25 million in the United States. Wow. Often older men, yes. sometimes younger, but what are the causes of eating? Well, it can be both older and young men. What's really important to understand is that it's not necessarily happens because of age. It, can, it happens in older men more frequently only because disease processes happen as, you, as we age. Um, but it can happen across a whole age range. Um, common causes both psychological and physical, although it's usually physical causes. You can have psychological causes that include um, anxiety performance and as well as stress because stress has such a major impact. Um, but diabetes, very common, um, will produce um, erectile dysfunction. Uh, MS will produce it, low testosterone, um, a number of vascular issues, a uh, number of prostate issues. Uh, so we have a whole wide range, including obesity, um, you know, just a variety of issues that can affect it, plus medications that treat disease processes can have a side effect. Wow, I mean, that list is really, really it's long. It's very extensive, and that's why the numbers are so great. Well, let's focus on talking about this, because yes. men can be very reluctant to talk about it, not only with their partner, but with their doctor. They're very reluctant to seek help, and that's why we really don't know all the numbers, because there's a number of men that don't seek help. Um, but actually, they're embarrassed by it. Uh, men typically think that they can fix things on their own, and they just don't know how to talk about it. So they think if they ignore it, um, it will improve. In, and what happens is that it just makes relationship issues very tense, and the lovemaking usually begins to really disappear completely in their relationship. And really increases the stress. So Very much so. How do you get to talking about this with your man? How do you start a conversation? Right. And do it in the right way, because yes. there are so many things that are wrong to say. Yes, it's a very delicate conversation conversation to have. So as I've said many times before, take the conversation out of the bedroom. Don't have the conversation when the malfunction is actually occurring right. in the bedroom. So take it out of the bedroom and really you're going to be the one that's initiating it as, as the wife. Um, to really say, look, I know this is a difficult topic, but we need to talk about it. Let me ask you this. What if he turns away? What if he doesn't want to address it because he's embarrassed or because he doesn't know what to say yeah. about it? How do you approach it then? I think, first of all, you have to, to expect that probably he's not going to be really forthcoming right away with it, and he's going to minimize it. And what you don't want to do is minimize it. You don't want to say, you know, it's, it's not really all that important to me, uh, because that really minimizes his experience as being a man. So don't give up. If you initiate the conversation once and he's not ready for it, then come back a second time and say, I'm here for you. We'll get this done together, and really give him some resources. So go directly to problem solving, because that's what men know and understand. But when you get to that problem solving, I think both men and women might bring up the issue of a pill to help things, but yes. that's not going to fix, it's not the quick fix of the band-aid, so to speak, right? It's not the quick fix yeah. because if something is under, a medical condition is underlying, you have to address that medical condition. And then you have to address whatever adjustments there are in terms of intimacy and approaching each other, and that does take communication and conversation. But what we want to know, what everyone wants to know is, is it treatable? And it's very treatable. The underlying causes are treatable, and there's lots of ways to adjust um, your routine in terms of lovemaking. So how do you share your feelings? Do you just approach it gingerly and just be gentle and, and you know, I, I, would, I guess reassuring as well. Well, and it's difficult for you as a woman because your first reaction is, he's not as attracted to me or there's someone else. And you really want to put those feelings initially on the back burner. And then if he's not coming around in terms of talking about it, you want to say, you know, I'm getting really frustrated with this. So we really do need to go and talk to someone. So you might start talking to a medical doctor. You might start talking to a mental health therapist first. But get the conversation going and get problems solving as quickly as possible.